Uh, the new school term is underway, we know. Scientists have warned that cases could rise rapidly, as John was talking about, by the end of September. Let's speak to one of our regular GPs on the programme. Dr Nigat Arif joins us live this morning. Good morning. Lovely to speak to you, as ever. Um, the whole sort of back-to-school uh, moment is, you know, a huge talking point for lots of parents, teachers and students at the moment. What, what's your, uh, what are you hearing from some of your patients? What sort of questions are coming up? And, and uh, I suppose about that vaccination programme as well. Yeah, it's an apprehensive time. I'm a mum to three kids, so I've got a three-year-old, a six-year-old and a ten-year-old, and they're all back at school. It's my three-year-old's first time in nursery, first time he's gone to school, so we're very anxious and excited. But I know that the schools have done so much over the summer to try and put safety measures in place. The problem is, is that Sage has already said that school, is, because of schools opening and universities opening, that actually surging cases could happen. And that's not because schools are dangerous places at all. It's because the, the logistics of how schools are, their ventilation is going to be difficult, their indoor spaces, the overcrowding. And now, as you heard earlier, there's no such things as bubbles anymore. And so we are expecting to have a surge of cases, but uh, that will then translate into how many people end up into hospitals and also the thing that we're always hearing about unvaccinated groups well they are our, our children you know our 12 to 15 year olds the jcvi decided that it wasn't safe to vaccinate healthy children but that's a decision that's still up in the air because we're looking at other countries um, america millions of 12 to 15 year olds have been vaccinated germany italy china has also completed their program in october or they will be completing their program in october vaccinating 12 to 15 year olds so i still feel that i think the surge in cases might be the deciding factor of whether the vaccination program is rolled out to 12 to 15 year olds because i as a gp i am getting those questions i'm getting some anxiety um Excite, excitementation, people are happy to go back. But also, as a doctor, I'm seeing COVID in my surgery still, COVID in children. I'm seeing, I hospitalised a 15-year-old with mild asthma last week, absolutely fine, ended up getting COVID, severely sick, and now in hospital. And I can't help as a doctor but think, do you know what? That could have been a preventable admission. He didn't need to be that sick if he'd had the vaccine. But I can completely understand people's anxiety about giving healthy children a vaccine as well. Uh, and Nigga, you talk about that, that one particular 15-year-old and uh, seeing uh, COVID in some other younger patients. Is that a change from what we saw during the height of the pandemic, do you think? We've seen COVID in children throughout the height of the pandemic, Dan. This isn't a, a change in any way. But what we are seeing is that we are seeing th symptoms of long COVID more so because at the pandemic, we didn't have enough data and didn't really understand what COVID and the long-term implications are. Now we do. So I'm seeing respiratory problems, chronic fatigue, aches and pains, headaches, chronic loss of smell up to six months. I'm seeing people's livelihoods affected by it. And then we're seeing those conditions in children as well. So it's the post-viral chronic conditions that we know that vaccination prevents. So there's a paper done by um, Guys and Thomases. The research shows that actually people who've had two doses of the COVID vaccine, it halves their chances of having post-viral complications. Uh, lots of things to talk to you about this morning. I was going to um, talk about, you know, the, the coming winter and booster jabs and things like that. But I also wanted to talk to you about um, the tragic passing of Sarah Harding, because I, I know there'll be lots of people who are reflecting on that this morning and thinking about, uh, you know, breast cancer, particularly in younger women and, and getting themselves checked. How is it how important is it to have, I suppose, to to think about what's happened to Sarah Harding and to, and to act on that? Because there'll be many people in that situation this morning. I think it's hard not to. The first time when I saw that, I thought, gosh, 39, so young. I'm 37 and mum of three. And so it really brings it home to how actually cancer doesn't discriminate. It's not an old person's disease. It can be any age. And also the fact that we should be checking ourselves. So if I can just take 10 seconds, Dan, and everybody else who are watching me, if you've got your cup of tea or you're doing something at home or getting ready for work, stop for 10 seconds. All I need you to do is just examine yourself. Three pops of your fingers around the breast tissue, men and women, because men can get cancer as well, looking for skin changes, feel around the nipple, go underneath the armpit, have a feel for lumps and bumps as well. Because if you feel a lump, if you see skin changes, discharge from the nipple, if you've got lumps in the armpit or around your neck that is new to you, 
we should be getting that looked at. And I know that there's a lot of animosity at the minute that people are saying, well, I'm not seeing my patients face to face. Well, that's a complex problem that we've got in general practice. We are overwhelmed. You mentioned the lack of flu vaccines earlier on, Dan. But the thing is, is that we are offering face-to-face -face appointments. Um, I'm duty doctor today. I'm due, I was duty doctor last Friday. I would say 50% of my consultations were face-to-face -face because I'm getting the most sickest people into my surgery so I can examine them. The problem is, is that we are seeing overwhelming sick people with COVID still coming into surgery. So unlike other spaces, we have the most clinically vulnerable people in our space. So to keep them safe, we just can't get everybody in all the time. We have to do a triaging system, such as a telephone or a video, and then to decide. But also, it just highlights with Sarah Harding that actually, you know, we need to be picking up symptoms early. We need to be diagnosing early. And if you can examine yourself, feel a lump, please, please don't hesitate to call the doctor because we will see you and we are open and you will get a face-to-face. And also at this time, if anyone's, you know, sparked their grief, because I'm dealing with grief a lot in general practice as well. Um, the Good Grief Trust has lots of information out there. But please, please don't grieve alone because the COVID pandemic has hit a lot of families in regards to this. Yeah, thank you very much for that. It's good to hear about face-to-face -face appointments. And thank you for that very helpful advice as well. I'm sure we'll, we will clip that up and put it on social media as well this morning. Yeah, well, that yeah. demonstration is absolutely brilliant. Uh, thank you very much. And speak to you soon. Thank you.